Hello everyone, this is Laws of Attraction Book 2, Chapter 1. So yeah, this is Chapter 1 of uh, Laws of Attraction Book 2. So yeah. Oh, Dan, what do you think? Hey, I love it. Yes, this thing. Not long ago. Excuse me, Kuba Michaels? Is that right? I'm Sadie McGraw of McGraw Barn in New York. And there's an office at McGraw Barn with your name on the door. Our senior partner Lev Abelman is retired room, and we all agree Gabe Ricky will replace him. I'll do my best to fill shoes. Gabe's promotion leaves a junior partnership open, which means one of these senior associates will be on a very fast track to partnership. That means we're all in a competition. You and the other associates are all working on your latest case and going to gain an advantage when Forget about this case, it's being reassigned. All of you are now officially part of the team representing Marcus Sharp. Pollyanna Val Velasquez has been murdered. Her boyfriend Marcus is a prime suspect, and we have to prove he didn't do it. Okay, by treasure instinct, so I assume you know something I don't. Because right now, I don't see how this case is winnable. Wait, are you serious? I didn't do it. I think Marcus' phone data could help strengthen his alibi. I have it all right here. It puts you in the pool house all night. And you were texting quite a lot from what I can tell. Marcus, who precisely were you texting with? Her name is Bella Pratchett, but I wasn't cheating. Ali and I weren't even together. I'm pretty sure Aliana was seeing someone who drives a black SUV, and they came by the house the night of the murder. <clears throat> So we know there's someone to look for, but right now that's all we know. What's the big break? I don't care if Gabe hasn't answered his phone. We're all here now. Lay it on us. Aliana spent the night at the hotel with the CEO of Koenig Chemical. And look at the picture of him in the Business Times. He looks like he has the same build as the man from the footage outside her house the night of the murder. Kua, what are you doing here? You have no way to prove Koenig's involvement. Shouldn't you be all be moving on to a new strategy? Actually, Iceland and a new Eliana must have kept her records somewhere, so we hacked her phone. Everything's there, Sadie. Records of their relationship, documents dating back years. No one will be able to deny Koenig was involved. Haliana knew Koenig Chemical has poisoned dozens of people, and she was going to blow the whistle. He must have killed her to keep her silent. I was just heading to the library to start getting this into the official case file. We might be able to prove the company, or Koenig himself, destroyed evidence in the class action suit. Let's dive in. As Gabe reaches for a binder, you hear Iceland, Iceland gaps, then the sound of a chair scraping the linoleum, and footsteps carrying hurrying across the floor behind you. Wordlessly, he grabs Aliana's phone out of Iceland's hands. Without thinking, you charge. Kua, stop! He's got a gun! And he's shooting at you. Kua, are you okay? Did he hit you? You've always been what matters. 
When you turn to Gabe, there's a fire in his eyes you've never seen before. His eyes drop to the curve of your lips, and you feel him suck in a ragged breath. Adrenaline still pumping through your veins, you pull Gabe's mouth to yours. The kiss is fast, hard, and explosive, like water breaking through a dam. You rip a button off his shirt as you tug it free from his pants, slipping your hands up and over the taut muscles of his stomach. Not only being able to touch him like this almost makes you dizzy. I thought I was going to lose you. You have me, I'm right here. Gabe, tons of records are missing from the K9 files, and the last person to sign them out was Sadie. And she knew Kua was going to be in the library. Do you think? Sadie was in league with Koenig all along. She tanked the class action, and now she's trying to get the man off for murder. We're here today because Sadie was in bed with Peter Koenig. She helped him get away with murder. Step by step, you lay out your evidence linking Sadie to Koenig's crimes. Withholding evidence, endangering our associate Sadie, if any of this got out, this would be the scandal of the century. Not to mention the end of McGraw Barn and a disbarment for us all. What were you thinking? You'll really take his word over mine? It's time we wrapped up this little farce with a vote. Am I still a partner or not? One by one, the partners all vote to eject Sadie. The eyes have it. Security will escort escort you out, escort you to clean out your office. Kua, I can't believe it. You did it. Kane is going to jail, and Sadie and her corruption are out. The next morning, Gabe pulls the entire office together for the partnership announcement. I couldn't be prouder to announce that Kua will be our newest junior partner. A junior partnership? How adorable. Excuse me? Didn't you hear? I'll be filling the empty senior partnership. But let me be clear, there are going to be some big changes around here, and Kua won't get a say in any of them. That was then, this is now. Chapter 1, Jury Still Out You wrap your knuckles on the open door of what used to be Sadie's enormous corner office. Her name is gone, replaced with new golden lettering. Same old Martin. He sure didn't waste any time. Come in. Martin beckons you in, then raises a finger to his lips, gesturing to the phone receiver wedged between his ear and shoulder. As you step inside, you see Gabe and the senior associates sitting in uncomfortable silence. Gabe meets your eyes and you pick up on the glint of tightly controlled fru frustration. Gabe's tight expression eases as you squeeze in beside him, your leg pressed in against his. Subtly, his hand brushes yours, and with everyone distracted, he leans in as close as he dares. Enjoying Vanderwell's little power play? No, but clearly, no, but he clearly is. I don't mind the company, though. Thank goodness for small favors. You look around Sadie's former office. You were so impressed by this place on your first date. Now it seems tainted. Martin finally puts the phone receiver back in his cradle. Why don't we get right to it? Some new cases came in, which means it's time for the two of you to impress me as lead counsel. Impress you? I thought Gabe decided which cases we worked. I do. Correction, you did. As the newest senior partner, I'll be overseeing the junior partners and senior associates. Martin leans forward and slaps a case file each on the desk in front of you in Iceland. I have a bad feeling about this. Do I at least get to choose my co own co-counsel, or do I need your approval for that too? I'll allow it, this time. 
Whoever you don't choose will work with Iceland, but I can pick carefully. This case is tricky. In that case, I'll work with the... Hell yeah, let's rock this thing. Next to you, Gigi shoots Iceland a smile. Then I guess that makes us team girl boss. You ready for this? Born ready. Was there any particular reason I was listed as mandatory on the invite for this meeting? Huh, I guess there wasn't. Without a word, Gabe stands and heads for the door, leading the others out after him. But as you follow his lead, Martin calls after you. Michaels, a word? You two hash that out. I'll be in your office when you need me, co-counsel. You wait for the room to clear before turning back to face him, and he rises from his desk chair like a king from his throne. How can I help you? Ashley, I'd like to help you. I know you have a tendency to favor our more, how should I put this, pro, pro bono clients, but I need you to suppress that urge today. The client I signed you has the potential to be a major asset for this firm. Hold your nose and keep him happy. I'm a lawyer, Martin, not a concierge. Well, if I were you, I'd put on a nice big smile because today I need you to be both. Before you can respond, he grips the door and with an easy flick of the wrist, the wood swings forward on his hinges and closes in your face. Good talk. With a sigh, you start walking down the hall towards your office. But the sound of furious typing from Gabe's office draws your attention. You poke her head inside to find him at his keyboard, jaw set. Looks like Martin's enjoying his promotion. That's one way to look at it. Personally, I was leaning toward insubordination, but to each their own. Look on the bright side, you're really hot when you're mad. A smile tugs at the corner of Gabe's mouth, and he finally tears his eyes away from his work to look out at you. If Martin keeps this up, you'll have plenty of eye candy, though I prefer to keep that side of things to after working hours. Which is why I'm calling a seniors partners meeting to discuss his new role. Focus on your winning your case. The less ammo we give Martin, the better. If adding one more win to my ledger pushes Martin closer to the exit, consider it done. Nice to see your priorities are straight. Gabe turns back to his work, but you can't help but linger in the doorway, thinking. Was there something else, Kua? You slip into the room and towards the desk, throwing a cautious glance over your shoulder. Justice. Quickly, you lean forward, cupping his face in your hands and pressing your lips to his. His tongue sweeps your bottom lip, and as you open to him, the taste of him consumes you. As quickly as it began, you pull away, leaving the both of you breathless. During the workday? Getting bold, aren't we? I'm a junior partner now. Figured it was time I take the initiative. Come find me later and I'll show you what a real go-getter I can be. Gladly, now get to work. That case won't win itself. Your lips tingle as you slip out of his office and down the hall towards your own, but with every step your focus recenters, preparing for the task at hand. You arrive in the office to find Bo diligently making notes of the case file. What have we got? You're going to wish you never asked that. He slides the case file your way. Our client George is suing his wife Lurleen because he thinks their baby, their baby is ugly. She's had a bunch of plastic surgery and he claims it amounts to her materially misrepresenting herself to him. But it says here that he's the one who paid for it all. It's a total sham of a suit, which is clearly his thing. 
He tried to sue her just last year, alleging adultery. Bo, does something seem off to you? Most people try marriage counseling, but this guy decided to go straight to court? Not to mention the presiding judges in every case have either dismissed the case with prejudice or found in favor of his wife. Before you can reply, there's a knock at the door and Ryan pokes his head in. Kua, your client, his wife, and her attorney are on their way up. Thanks Ryan, we'll be right there. What are we gonna do? We've got nothing. Let's withhold judgment until we meet him. Maybe he'll be more reasonable than we think. You enter the conference room to the sound of shouting. A middle-aged man leans over the table staring daggers at a breathtakingly beautiful woman. Admit it, Lurling, you lured me into this marriage under false pretenses. Don't respond to that. Trust me, I had no intention of dignifying that BS with a response. You extend your hand to the man and try not to flinch as he envelops it in a crushing grip. Mr. Armstrong, I presume. I'm Kua Michaels and this is Beau McGraw. Where are your attorneys? Michaels, Martin Vanderwell told me you're one of the best. I just hope you can help me right this wrong. Can we keep this moving? I swear to God, George, if this takes as long as the time you try to sue me for cheating on you. With all due respect, has a DNA... Was there an affair, Mrs. Armstrong? No, I don't know why I didn't divorce him on the spot for dragging me through that in the first place. Really? I can think of 28.5 million reasons why you didn't. Uh, there's no record of prenuptial agreement in your file. Why would there be? That's not relevant to our current situation. We believe it is. My client has outlasted the prenup and is entitled to half of Mr. Armstrong's client assets. Barring evidence of marital wrongdoing on her part. A clause he's been doing his best to exploit. It's obvious there's no case here, Mr. Michaels. Mrs. Armstrong will let this drop if he agrees to honor the prenup and cover her legal fees. Over my dead body, that boy is hideous, Lurleen, and it's all your fault. You're insane. There's nothing wrong with our son. You look from your furious client to his fed up wife. Throughout the book, the choices you make will impact what sort of attorney you become. Choose wisely. Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong, can I see a picture of your son? We'll need to- I'd love to put a face to who we're trying to protect. You'll regret it. Will you stop? You may not love our son, but I do, and I refuse to hear this from you. You may as well show them, Lurleen. It's what he's hinging his case on, after all. Mrs. Armstrong sighs and pulls up a photo on her phone. She hands it to you. This is Templeton, our son, and I, for one, think he's perfect. Bo peers over your shoulder as you study the picture. I'm not exactly an expert on kids, but that looks like a normal baby to me. You return Mrs. Armstrong's phone and keep your tone as neutral as possible. Well, we'll need a copy of that sent to us. You're really going to make us pursue this? Of course they are. We're taking this to court and we're going to wipe the floor with you. We'll investigate our options. Thank you for coming in, Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong. We'll be in touch. Your client shakes your hand and heads out, along with his wife and her attorney. You sigh as your argu their arguing voices fade down the hallway. Martin screwed us. 100%, which is all the more reason for drinks. Brass monkey? It's like you read my mind.
The brass monkey is already packed with the after work crowd when the two of you arrive. Kua, over here! Gigi waves at you from the corner booth that she and Island had already commandeered. That pitcher of beer ju looks just large enough for me to drown myself in. Dive in, I already got another on the way. Given the copious amounts of alcohol on the tap, is it safe to say we all have the day from hell? Big time. Martin stuck me with over 200 boxes of Discovery because I can't be trusted to hold my own in court. He's just taken digs to try to undermine our confidence. We can't let him get to us, especially since we've all seen how devious he can be. Maybe you have, but I'm in the dark over here. I'm still trying to figure out how he nabbed Sadie, Sadie's office. The way Martin tells it, he got Aunt Sadie to sign contracts indemnifying McGraw Barn and the cover up of Aliana's murder. It's more than that. He looks up as Gabe walks over and he pulls the seat up to your table. He settles in next to you. Martin found a way to keep Sadie quiet about what happened. Her reputation is tied to the firm, so his promotion is the partner's thank you. Honestly, it was makes me want to shower. I know Martin's maneuvers probably saved our jobs, but it just makes me feel gross working for a place that's okay with that. What about Koenig? Doesn't he know Sadie was involved? How's Martin keeping him quiet? I'm guessing I'd rather not know the answer to that. The point is, while we were trying to help our client, Martin found a way to help himself and screw us in the process. But what he doesn't know is that we have a few tricks of our own, specifically Gabe Ritchie. You're working on your magic on the other partners? I'm not sure if magic is the word I'd use, but I am scheduling a meeting to speak with them. I thought you were supposed to speak with them this afternoon. Is something wrong? No, at least I don't think so. It's just a scheduling issue. The point is, I'll raise your concerns, and my own. So what do we do about our case until then? Do makes me feel like I should apologize for my entire gender, but if we drop it, I'm sure Martin will come up with something worse. If you can't win this case and you can't drop it, can you convince the client to drop us? That's not a bad idea. It's certainly a losing case, specific, especially since no one can predict what a baby will look like later in life. No kidding, I don't look anything like I did when I was a baby. Can you believe I was blonde? The music changes and suddenly she squeals. Okay, enough shop talk. Tomorrow we'll build hours for the Vanderwall regime, but tonight we dance. She grabs Bo's hand, dragging him between the tables, and Gabe excuses himself to order from the bar, leaving you and Iceland completely alone. Looks like it's just you and me, Iceland, if only we could team up in court. I feel like step one of Martin's evil plan was separating the dream team. He must have realized we're too powerful together. First intelligent observation he's ever made. He watches her smile shrinks before disappearing completely, and she gazes around the empty booth with sad eyes. I know the past is past, but I hate how things have changed. Fighting for a junior partnership was so fulfilling, and now... And now you're drowning in discovery with no land in sight. We may have been competitors, but we were a family too. Now work is just work again. Worse, it's a snake pit. Yeah, I guess I see what you mean. Alright, clearly I need to find a song on the jukebox or something. Ideally, one that breaks this maudlin feeling. With a parting smile, Iceland moves across the bar to peer at the jukebox, leaving you alone at the table. You notice that Gabe's also still alone at the bar. Your eyes drift to where he's standing, drink in hand, seeming to fill your gaze. He turns to you, raising his glass with a sly smile as he looks you over. You can almost feel his gaze kerosene, 
and your breath hitches in your throat as he raises an eyebrow in invitation. Leave with me. The air around you seems to heat with the intensity of the desire in Gabe's eyes. I have a feeling Gabe's mind is not at work anymore. It might be time to catch up with him somewhere more private. Sneak, with a, sneak away with a Gabe or Ivan for a steamy night together. I think I'll sneak away with Gabe. When you are sure you have Gabe's attention, you rise from the booth and tilt your head towards the door to the back patio. No sooner has the night air touched your skin than he's caught up with you, wrapping an arm around your waist. Looks like you got the message. Being an astute observer is part of the job, so should we find somewhere more private? Do you really need to ask? Gabe makes a quick call, and by the time you make it out to the street, a shiny black town car is waiting for you. He opens the door and you slide to the far end of the backseat, the expensive letter warm beneath you. As the car pulls away from the curb, Gabe ships closer to you, running a hand over the top of your thigh. Finally, I have the newest junior partner at McGraw Barn all to himself, all to myself. You tilt your head back and he presses his kiss to the pulse point at the base of your neck. Hmm. Encouraged by your moans, Gabe's lips travel up your throat and to your lips. You suck at his bottom lip into your mouth, dipping just a bit as his hands pull you closer. I want to slide my hand up his thigh. As the kiss grows frenzy, you rest your hand on his thigh and fan out your fingers, itching them higher. You want to feel every inch of him, so you run your palm up the inside of his pants seam until he groans, hips flexing to meet your touch. God. You can feel his desire growing beneath your hands as you stroke him lightly through, your, through the fabric. He squeezes your backside, pulling you closer, kisses taking on a new heat as his hands move over you. The things I could do to you, right here in this car, Gabe's voice is electric, sparking over your skin, making your pulse jump in anticipation. Aren't we going to your place? I don't think I can wait that long. Besides, I spring for the luxury seats if you're not going to use them. He bends to trace a line of kisses along your throat. You throw your head back, hands sinking into the buttery soft leather seats as Gabe's kisses thrill through you. His breath is ragged, his gaze dark and intense, and makes you feel powerful. You move to straddle him, and his hands slip around to the small of your back, hips thrusting up to meet you, almost of their own accord. I think it's time to take advantage of this. Gabe reaches across the car for a remote control, pressing a button labeled privacy. An additional thick pane of tinted glass rises between the back of the seat and the front. Now, where were we? I want to take, get out of these clothes. You press his hands down to the sides and lean back before running your hands along your body. He watches your face as you make yourself gasp and moan, working yourself up. Mm, there's something about doing this in the back of a car that makes it that much hotter, knowing anyone could come in and find us. Oh, and what does that make you want to do? In answer, you slowly tug the hem of your shirt free from your waistband, taking your time as you draw it up over your stomach, revealing the smooth skin there, inch by inch. Gabe's eyes roam over your body hungrily, his gaze so intense you can almost feel it heating your skin. I love seeing how much you want me. You have no idea how much. You indulge him, bearing him each uh, each skin, inch of skin slowly, relishing his reaction as you do. As soon as you free yourself from his clothing, his hands are on you, gripping your hip, grazing along your chest. Once you're naked, Gabe reaches down between your legs, taking you in hand and stroking slowly. You can feel your desire growing with each slow movement of his hand. 
You groan as he runs his thumb over the tip. Do you like that, Kua? I'd like it more if I could see a bit more of you. Smirking, Gabe releases you just long enough to shrug off his suit. When he tugs down his own underwear, you see that he his need matches yours. He reaches for you. You too. I want to watch you. I want to watch you enjoy this while I am. Gabe takes you in one hand, stroking himself with the other. Your breath begins to come short, your own pleasure completing with the excitement of watching Gabe's hand move over himself. Hmm, any other demands, Kua? I need to fill your mouth. I was hoping I'd get to taste you. He obliges, kissing his way up into the inside of your thigh until you're shivering with need. Just when you think you can't take it anymore, he envelops you with the warmth of his mouth, his tongue swirling along your length, te teasing the tip. Oh Gabe, yes. He holds your hips down as you try to buck, panting, your moans take on, taking on a guttural need. Every motion of his head, every flick of his tongue, drives you wild. You grip him as he works to bring you closer. I, I can't last much longer. He brings you right up to the edge and you teether there. Sure, any more sensation will cause you to fall. Please, I want you, Gabe, now. Tell me what you want and it's yours. I want you to bend me over the seat. Gabe doesn't say a word, but he flips you onto your stomach and bends your front over the seat. He palms your backside, watching you squirm as he makes you wait. Finally, when your need is starting to feel like a physical pain, he presses himself against you, and you can feel the heat of him sliding along your skin. Finally, your bodies connect, and a moan rips out of you as he makes one slow thrust. You take yourself in hand, stroking yourself slowly as his hips move against you. More! He answers you with another thrust, faster than another. You bite your lip to keep from being too loud. Let it out, Kua. I want to hear what I do to you. You know he has no intention of going easy on you, and as you pant, he brings you closer to the edge, your moans becoming more frantic, harder to control. Oh god, I'm going to... He quickens his pace, and you can't contain your answering moan. He brings you closer and closer to the tip of your pleasure. Until he's wrung every possible sound out of you, and you shatter into stars. Sweaty and spent, you lay against each other in the backseat. Gabe's touch is surprisingly tender, feather light as it lazily traced the curves of your spine. Mmm, that was excellent. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. There's no, there's a tone in his voice you don't quite recognize. You lift your head to focus on his expression, which looks pensive and soft. I'm surprised with a performance like that, you should be gloating by now. I don't need to glow, I know how I make you feel. He tries to keep his voice light, but you sense something deeper there. And while I... You watch him as he struggles with his next words. The wheels turn for a few moments, and then he takes a deep breath to steady himself. Never mind, it's nothing. Wait a second, do I have Gabe at a loss for words? Is it nothing? Can't we be straight with each other by now? Because the firm's car didn't deserve this. I hope you have someone on speed dial who knows how to dry clean fancy Italian leather. Always, and don't worry, it was very worth it. He groans and sits you up, handing you your clothes. So much so that we reached the end of the ride, I'm afraid. He points to the darkened car window. Just outside, you see your familiar street roll by. And here I was hoping we'd be stuck in New York traffic for at least another 15 minutes. His good natured laugh quickly drives away his pensive mood, but you catch him still watching you with that soft look as both of you shimmy back into your clothing. Here, your tag's showing. He tucks it back in and at the neck taking the opportunity to bend in and kiss you once more. 
Get some rest, you'll need to be at your best if you want to beat Martin at his own game. Oh, I'm planning on it. You step out of the town car and onto the sidewalk, giving Gabe one last flirty wave before heading inside. Later that night, you're lying in bed, unable to sleep as you run the particulars of the case through your mind over and over again. George Armstrong is petty and obsessed with appearances. He didn't even have a photo of his own kid on his phone. You sit bolt upright as something Iceland said earlier in the night drifts back to you. No kidding, I don't look anything like I did when I was a baby. Oh my god, that's it! You grab your phone and craft a series of carefully worded emails, then hit send before lying it back in bed, a smile curling at your lips. Your move, Martin. You arrive the next morning to find Bo hooking his laptop to the conference room projector. The client's on his way up. Is everything ready? We're good to go. Bold player, Kua. Let's just hope Mr. Armstrong takes the bait. Moments later, the door opens and Mr. Armstrong strides inside, looking at you expectantly. You said you had something to show me? That's right, take a seat, Mr. Armstrong. You nod a bow, he hides a smile and hits a key on his laptop. The screen of the conference room wall fills with a flattering picture of your client. He lights up at the sight of himself. What's this? As you might have guessed, due to the nature of this case, visual aids will be very important to our argument. So you are taking the case? Of course. Someone needs to stand up for the rights of successful men. Here, here. I've always said how difficult it is to be a conventionally attractive, rich white male in today's society. I'm sure Mr. McGraw here understands. Oh, uh, I mean, I get what you're saying. You're in the right hands. Us men have to stick together. You gesture to the sideshow, bringing your client's attention back to the picture of himself. We'll open by showing the court pictures of you and your wife side by side. A picture, a perfectly attractive image of Mrs. Armstrong appears on the screen, pre-cosmetic surgery. Your client heaves a sigh. Well, there's all the evidence you need. She was so plain when we met. And that's exactly the angle we'll take. There's no way that this baby could possibly have inherited your genes. You click to another picture, a tight close-up of a baby's face. Ugh. Did you have to make the picture so big? It's like staring into the eyes of Medusa. Just so I'm sure what points to drive home in court, would you mind identifying the aspects of your son's appearance you find most offensive? Where do I even start? His freakishly red clown lips, his buggy little eyes, his awful pudgy cheeks. I could go on, but I'm sure you can see what I'm seeing. My son is irredeemably hideous. And you don't think he'll grow out of it? How could he? Dealt a genetic hand like that? The boy's doomed. You click again, zooming the photo out a bit. Look at him. The case is open and shut. I understand your concern, and frankly, it reflects well on you as a parent. Wait, is that brown towel in the background? Actually, yeah, that doesn't look like our house. In fact, I haven't even seen tile like that since. Ah, oh, crap. Sorry, Kua. I got the order of the pictures all messed up. The slide was switched to a second photo of the same baby giggling in the arms of a woman with a fabulous 80s perm. Mom? Damn it, Bo. Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong baby pictures are all, are supposed to come after their sons. My bad. I was drift, drafting my fantasies team while I built the deck. Here's the right picture. 
Your client bling, blinks in shock as his picture is replaced by an image of his son being cuddled close by his blissful wife. The two babies are nearly identical. How? How can that be me? The first picture looks so much like little Templeton. Huh, those two pictures do look similar. Maybe babies aren't the best measure of attractiveness. So I'm just supposed to wait until he grows out of it? It's certainly an option. Anyone can see that you turned out handsome. But nobody saw your kiss back then. My wife won't stop posting his horrible little face all over social media. I'm sure that's difficult, but I'm not certain a court would think it is clear as a burden of proof. Your client slams his hand down on the table. I don't care, just find something that I can peg on my wife. You set both palms on the table and look your clients calmly in the eye. Mr. Armstrong, I think it's time to show your wife a little compassion. Damn it, I should have sued for another affair. She's always tipping that joke gardener. Is it too late to change? To change the reason why you're suing her? I'm afraid you have to withdraw this case and then amount a new one, but bear in mind that specious spec cases you brought against her in the past will be used as evidence against you by her attorney. I guess I'll have to wait a while before the next one then. He stands and gives you the curt nod. I appreciate the honesty, Michaels. Bo gives a low whistle as the door closes behind your client. Yikes, the plan played off though. How'd you think of that little photo trick? I remember what Iceland said about looking completely different as a baby and that idea snowballed from there. You start out at the conference room door bursts door burst open. Myron Glower is in the doorway. What did you do? Myron, I take it you just ran into my floor, former client? I told you to win this case, not chase him out of the building. I didn't chase anyone away. Besides, you know that case was unwinnable. Only in the hands of someone unwilling to do whatever it takes to win. Martin presses his thumb and his forefinger to the bridge of his nose. I gave you a real opportunity here, Kua. A chance to show me and everyone that you're not going to repeat the mistakes you made with Sadie. Sorry, I must have misheard you. Do you mean having ethics? If that's what you want to call your blind spot, sure. The only other the other senior partners need to hear about this. I want you upstairs and ready to explain yourself in 15 minutes. Hang on. Not you. He levels a cold stare at you. Junior partners are held to a higher standard than associates. I thought you understood that, but clearly I overestimated you. Without a party, with a parting smirk, he turns and stalks out of the conference room. How much do you want to bet Martin's going to turn them against me before I even walk through the door? Dude, of course he is, which is why you had to fight fire with fire. You're a partner too, after all. And how do you suggest I do that? Show up looking like the boss that you are, and Sadie always drills into everyone how much appearances matter, matter in this business. I know the other partners feel the same way. Dress to impress the partners and gain an edge in your meeting. You stride into Martin's office exactly 15 minutes later with your head held high to find the senior partners already waiting for you. Afternoon everyone. Gabe shoots you an approving smile while Linda and Reggie fix you with an impressed glances. Partner meetings look good on you, Kua. 
I, for one, am pleased to see you're taking this se meeting seriously, Kua. Kua always have known how to play the game. Not that I expect any less from our newest junior partner. He might look the part, but that doesn't negate the serious concern Martin has brought to us. As I was just explaining to the partners, Kua, I'm concerned that you don't understand your responsibilities as a junior partner. I understand them perfectly, but... But nothing. We lost several loyal, high-paying kinds when Sadie retired. They need to be replaced, not turned away. We can't replace them with anyone. We need to find good new clients. Kua astutely... Yes, yes, we're aware that you, Kua is a favor of yours, Gabe, but if you can't remain impartial, perhaps you'd better stay quiet. The remark stuns the room into silence, and as Gabe tries to collect his composure, Reggie clears his throat. I have to admit, I am worried by the judgment Kua displayed in letting this client go. Is there a solution? I'm not suggesting disciplinary measures yet. But I do think Kua would benefit from having me supervise all his cases until he finds his killer instinct. What? I can assure you that's not necessary. I'd like to hear Kua's side of things before we make any decisions. Yes, perhaps there's something we're missing. The senior partners turn to you and you survey your options. Martin and Eli are obviously lost causes, and Gabe's already been accused of favoritism. That just leaves Linda and Reggie. I should appeal to... Reggie Whitman's tender heart. I know we're losing a lot, Reggie, and trust me, I care about that, but this is the right thing to do. The fact is, my client was attempting to use his own infant son to defraud his wife. He was suing her because he claims it's her fault their son is ugly. I see. That's something I'm not sure I could have stomached either, to be entirely honest with you. That's not the point. Kua has displayed a tendency to act on his own volition without considering the impact of his choices. I want a straight in explanation, Kua. What gave you the right to abandon a case assigned to you by a senior partner? I made my choice because had absolutely no legal precedent. I can point you to precedent that might build a case for the defendant, but there's nothing to bolster our side. Even if we managed to get the case heard, our client would have lost badly on the merits that doesn't help us long term. He has a point, Eli. If this case had come across any of our deaths, we had laughed it out of the building. It was a strange choice on your part, Martin. Yes, Martin. Why would you- Maybe you could explain why you chose to accept it. I was told to bring in high client- High paying clients. George Armstrong was willing to sign a retainer agreement. The validity of this case is not in question here. Exactly. This meeting is to discuss Kua's conduct, not mine. My conduct didn't happen in a vacuum, it was a direct result of Martin's poor decision. Martin showed nev should never have approved this case, it's not the firm we want to be. McGraw Barn is a gold standard every other law firm in New York aspires to, it's why I jumped at the chance to work here. We can't abandon our values or our commitment to the law just because we hit a rough patch. I, ho I wholeheartedly disagree. Ku is trying to pull the wool over your eyes, but... Enough! This is dissol devolving into bickering. Agreed. Let's vote on the matter of whether Kua should be under Martin's supervision for a probationary period. I vote yes, obviously. And I vote no. As far as I'm concerned, Kua displayed excellent judgment in dealing with this case. Big surprise. I also vote no. Who is right? We need to uphold our moral standards, especially after what happened with Sadie.
And I vote yes, the partner hierarchy exists for a reason. Martin throws you a smug smile as the most senior partner at your firm sides against you. That brings us to a tie. Ninda, that leaves Kua's fate in your hands. Suddenly nervous, you turn your attention on Linda. Gabe sees her anxiety and steps in with an easy smile. Linda, I think if you examine... Your input is neither necessary nor welcome, Gabe. Gabe looks shocked by the brush off, then hides it quickly. Of course, if, anything's, if anyone's capable of dissecting this on its merits, it's you. Linda turns a discerning gaze on you. You argue your decision while I agree with Eli that we should respect the senior partner hierarchy, but it shouldn't come at the expense of logic. Martin's made what was clearly a bad decision accepting the case, which is why I vote no to supervision. I suppose the no's have it. As disappointed as I am that my first case as a junior partner ended this way, I assure you I'm taking my responsibilities seriously. For your sake, I hope so. Winning cases starts with knowing which ones to choose, Martin. If you're expecting Kua to succeed, I start there. I, I'll keep that in mind. He shows you all to the door before closing it behind you with an angry click. Eli and Reggie head up the corridor, but Linga, Linda lingers. I'm sure you already noticed, Gabe, but things have changed in Sadie's absence. You're not the golden boy anymore. Without her protection, a smart attorney would tread carefully. Sound advice, Linda. Thank you. She nods curtly at you and moves on, leaving you and Gabe alone. Gabe, are you? Don't worry about me. Let's focus on you and the win you just had. I was pretty impressive in there. And I have just a case to help you capitalize on the high you're riding right now. It's time to remind Martin what you're made of, what both of us are made of. New, the rules of the game. Martin's upended everything. Will you be able to outwit your one-time rival? Keep the laws of attraction too to find out.